Today we are going to discuss the cell transport. We have already discussed the cell is surrounded by a membrane known as the uh, cell membrane or the uh, plasma membrane uh, which has uh, basically uh, two layers of um, lipids known as lipid bilayer and it is also uh, having proteins, different types of proteins. Inside the cell there is fluid known as the intracellular fluid or the ICF and uh, outside the cell there is known uh, fluid known as the um, e extracellular fluid or the ECF. For the cell survival it is very much necessary that there are some fixed uh, amount of nutrients inside the cell and some uh, fixed amount of nutrients outside the cell. The cell should regularly utilize the, the nutrients of these substances and um, the waste products which are formed inside the cell they should go out. For the substances the nutrients um, uh, to come inside the cell and for the waste material to go outside the cell there is um, a system uh, for uh, which is known as the transport or transport through the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. This transport is very much necessary uh, to maintain homeostasis or similar condition inside the cell and uh, outside the cell so that uh, conditions inside the cell and outside the cell uh, stay the same and when the cell is able to function normally and when the cell will be able to function normally the tissues the organs the system and the human body will be able to you know, function normally so uh, let's go and discuss the you know, transport how the things are transported into and outside the cell so basically there are two main types of transport one is the passive transport and the other is the active transport in passive transport no energy is required for substances to come in or go outside the cell while in active transport energy is required for substances or the nutrients to come in and go out of the cell the passive transport or the diffusion or the downhill transport it is also known it is known as downhill because it does not need energy and it is like coming from the hill towards the ground Someone is standing on the hill and he is coming towards the ground. This is a downhill and no energy is basically required for this type of transport and that's why it's known as downhill transport or downhill diffusions. While in active uh, transport, energy is basically required to uh, pull something into the cell or throw something outside the cell into the extra. So that's why it is uphill. It is uphill or it's like going uh, above towards the top of the hill. Today, in this lecture, we will be basically discussing the classification of the different types of transport and then in the coming uh, lectures, we will be going into the details of those uh, types of transports. So the passive transport or the transport which does not need any type of energy or mm, it is further divided into two main types. One is simple diffusion and the other is facilitated diffusion. Simple diffusion does not need any carrier and the facilitated diffusion it basically needs a uh, carrier. The simple diffusion is then further divided into two main types. The simple diffusion may be through the lipid layer or through the protein. Some substances like oxygen, carbon dioxide and alcohol, they are soluble in the lipids and they come directly into the cell and they can go directly out of the cell without any interruption, without any uh, help of any carrier and uh, they uh, basically um, come in and go out uh, through the lipid bilayer. So and this is uh, basically a type of simple diffusion and that's through lipid uh, layer. Another type of simple diffusion is through the proteins. In this type of uh, transport, some substances are like sodium, potassium, glucose, etc. They, uh, they will come through the uh, proteins. One type of protein are basically uh, the carrier carriers and they are facilit facilitating the, uh, the, the transport of nutrients like glucose and amino acid. But the other type is which is a which is a form of simple diffusion they, uh, they are present they are sometimes completely open while at other times they may be open or closed so on that basis that proteins that proteins which are other than um, carrier proteins for the facilitated diffusion they are further having uh, two types 
So simple diffusion is of two types. It's either through the lipid layer or it's through the protein. Through the protein, the, um, the they are further of two types. The protein or the carriers, they may be the gated, gated channels. The protein may be gated or they may be ungated channels. The ungated channels, uh, the ungated channels are open all the time. Because any nutrients or any type of substances, they can come in or go out. For example, water, it is coming in and going out without any, uh, without any interruption. And the gates of these channels are always open. They never close the channels. But because uh, some substances are insoluble in the lipid layer the lipid bilayer so that's why they come through the protein and inside the protein there is a pore or a channel through which these um, substances can come in or go out then there are some uh, gated channels the gated channels they are further of three types the gated channels uh, they function only when they are open the gates are open when the gate is open it's nutrients can come in and or they can go out but if the gate is closed then nutrients cannot come in and cannot go out but they does not they uh, they do not need any type of energy and that's why they are a kind of um, passive diffusion or passive transport so the gated channel are further divided into three types passive transport is simple and facilitated Simple is through the lipids or through the proteins and then the protein is through the gated or ungated and finally the gated, the gated are of three types. This gate, this gate of the um, channel, it may function through three different ways. Basically they may work or function through many ways but three are three types are very very important some gates open and close with the help of action potential or electric current some uh, some gates open and close with the help of some hormones or chemicals and uh, some gates open and close with the help of some mechanical uh, mechanics like uh, some flow or pressure etc a very good example of voltage gated channel is calcium channel in the neuromuscular junction when the signals are coming from the human brain or the spinal cord toward the muscle the end of the neuron is the presynaptic terminal which comes in connection with the postsynaptic terminal above the muscle this area is having some channels known as the calcium channels and they, these calcium channels open only when action potential on the electric current comes this way. Once the electric current on action potential comes here, these channels open and the calcium comes in. So these channels, basically the calcium channels present here are voltage gating channels and they open only when some sort of uh, a, a, or a limit of voltage is achieved. They only open and they when they open calcium can come in. Once the calcium come in, there is a hormone known as acetylcholine. This acetylcholine is acting as a ligand for a sodium channel which is present outside the um, outside the presynaptic terminal or um, where sodium channels are present. When the acetylcholine comes out with the help of calcium channel, this acetylcholine opens sodium which is present in the space bet um, between the presynaptic and postsynaptic terminal and when the sodium comes in they can help in the action potential in the muscle and mus muscle can move and we can lift something or we can move our limb so this sodium channel this sodium channel present in the postsynaptic terminal or in the membrane of a muscle which helps with the which opens with the help of acetylcholine this is an example of ligand gated channel so an example of 
voltage gated channel is the calcium channel there are other examples as well in the human body but we are just considering one example so one example of voltage gated channel is calcium channel in the presynaptic while the example of ligand gated channel is acetylcholine mediated sodium channel in postsynaptic membrane then the third types of gated channel are mechanically gated channel channels mechanically gated channels basically functions open or close with the help of some mechanics and a very good example of them is the potassium channel in the organ of corti organ of corti is present in the human ears when sound waves comes uh, from the outside and they touch the eardrum there is some sort of movement in the cilia of these cells neur which are basically part of connected with the neuron and when the cilia move below the cilia there are some potassium channels and they only open when the cilia moves so there is some sort of mechanics of movement involved and due to that that movement the potassium channels open once the potassium channel opens potassium comes in an action potential is generated which moves towards the human brain and the human brain then makes some sort of meaning from that sound which is touching the human ear so this is the third example of a gated uh, channel and that's basically a mechanically gated um, uh, channel so the passive transport passive transport does not require any sort of energy and the there are uh, two basic types one is simple diffusion and the other is facilitated diffusion we have discussed the example of simple diffusion the simple diffusion may be through the lipids or it may be to the proteins the the diffusion or the transport through the proteins is further of two types it may be through the ungated where there is no gate and it's always open while it may be due to the uh, through the gated channels the gated channels are sometimes open and sometimes closed their opening and closing may be dependent upon the voltage or some ligand or some mechanics so they are basically three different types voltage gated channel ligand gated channel and mechanically gated channel voltage gated channels are uh, calcium channels in the uh, pre synaptic terminal of the neuromuscular junction that's one example ligand gated channels are uh, acetylcholine mediated sodium channel in the post synaptic post synaptic membrane and put mechanically gated channels are potassium channel in the organ of corti in the human ear these are just one example from each category there are other examples as well in the human body then we come towards the facilitated diffusions facilitated diffusion also does not require any sort of energy and this is basically used for glucose and amino acid they are large molecules and they cannot directly come in so some help is required for the uh, for these molecule to come in and go out of the cell so the glucose or amino acid they get attached to the carrier when they are open and they when they it attached to the carrier this carrier or a protein it facilitates the movement of glucose or amino acid into the cell and they get close from outside so that at a single time a small quantity or a fixed quantity of glucose or amino acid is going through uh, they coming inside or going outside but the quantity is fixed and the rate through which the glucose or amino acid may come in and go out that is a fixed and the rate cannot exceed that limit so the, this brings us to the conclusion of, of the uh, passive transport the type of transport uh, which does not require any sort of energy i will revise it uh, quickly uh, passive transport is basically uh, also known as diffusion it is a downhill uh, downhill movement it's of two types simple diffusion or facilitated simple diffusion may be through the lipids directly or through the proteins then through the proteins it may be further of two types through the gated or ungated through the gated channel the gated channels may be voltage gated or ligand gated or maybe mechanically gated and then we have the second category which is facilitated diffusion in the next lecture we will be discussing active transport in how um, the energy or atps are required to move some substances into the cell and some outside the cell
till then thanks